Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Demco towed vehicle conversion. Now this is going to be if you had a stay and play duo, which is a great braking system, but you've upgraded your coach to air brakes. This is going to allow you to convert to an Air Force One and that way you can get air brakes working on your towed vehicle. So throughout a flat tow vehicle's lifespan, sometimes you end up upgrading either the vehicle or the coach. And that means not everything plays ball. So if you've gone to a larger coach with air brakes, you know, unfortunately the stay and play duo is not going to be working. So instead of taking out the entire system, you can simply buy the conversion, which is gonna give you the main unit here, as well as the lines to hook up to the front, your air line, also your fitting here and also the tank and fittings to hook up to the air supply on your RV. Now this is a pretty simple system, especially if you have everything in place to just kind of cut a few wires. You can utilize a lot of the same airlines already. You will have to run a new one and you will have to tie into your RV. But something also to consider is a lot of newer RVs will already have the tank in place. So something you're gonna wanna check is to see if you have that fitting on the back of your RV already. And if that's the case, you're gonna be in luck. Now, a lot of the installation that we've done is going to be uh, specific to how you've installed your system. Uh, it could be very easy or depending on where you've mounted your module, uh, it could be a little bit tricky. But overall, the pr uh, premise of swapping everything over is pretty simple. Um, and as far as getting the airline set up on your RV, we have a Freightliner chassis here, so uh, it may look a little bit different. The instruction manuals are really good about letting you know what to do. And if you follow along with ours, you're going to get the basic premise of kind of what you're going to be doing doing. Now speaking of that installation, let's take a look at that now. You flat towed your vehicle and you've had a stay and play duo in place, but you've swapped over to a coach that has air brakes you are gonna have to change out your braking system. And the great part is uh, these play very well together as far as the Air Force One and the stay and play duo. So converting it over to be able to run from air brakes isn't that difficult. So we're gonna utilize a lot of the same stuff from the stay and play's original installation. So this should be pretty easy on our car side. Now, obviously there's gonna be a tank that we're gonna to have to tie into the RV, which I can show you a little bit later, but let's go ahead and get our Air Force One started to be installed. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna see if I can't take our old unit off and mount it up in the same exact spot. And that way we have all of our wires and air fittings right there for us. Now, depending on where your uh, stand plate is mounted up, this could get obviously a little bit tricky if you got crafty as far as hiding it. The main thing is, is all of our connections have to go into that main unit. And the Air Force One is actually a little bit smaller. Um, it's about the same length and it's definitely got a smaller footprint. So um, wherever your stay and play was mounted before, your Air Force One will fit. So uh, get yours taken out and when it comes to cutting our wires, I'll show you that, but the main thing is get your unit loose um, and get it out of the way so we can get our Air Force One in. So I've got this taken off to where it's not mounted up anymore. And what we're gonna do is start transferring our airlines first. So our push connect fitting here, if you just push on that collar in, you should be able to pull this out. That'll release that locking mechanism. Now we're gonna put this directly in on our air out. And this is gonna go to our cylinder. So one of our connections is done. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get our large vacuum line off. Um, so this already routes over to our booster. I'm gonna maintain or retain the uh, one-way check valve here. And uh, to get this pried out, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky. You can use silicone and kind of just pry this to kind of break it around, um, or at least break the seal that's on that barb fitting. I can get this end off pretty easily here. So let me get my, uh, some tools here and I'll pry this out. Now we are gonna need to um, attach a little bit of a rubber end just like we have here to attach to our barb fitting. So I'll be cutting a little of this just to kind of create a connector. If you have a small pick, sometimes that'll help kind of open this up and then we can kind of pry on this out. You can also use a flat head and just kind of work at this. It can be a little bit tricky to get these out, um, especially if they've been on there for a while. There we go. And we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we have the uh, black facing towards our uh, main unit here. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna cut off a small little section to create our jumper and I'll be using a uh, tubing cutter here. 
So just make sure that you have enough uh, to slide on that brass fitting and also have enough for um, the edge here on our uh, booster line. So I'm figure about two inches or so. Put our one way check in and then we can go ahead and reconnect our booster line. We need to tie our two wired connections here from our Air Force One into part of the stay and play duo. So using the existing wires, we're gonna be tapping one of them into a ground, which the black wire is the system ground of the stay and play duo. So we'll be utilizing that. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and give myself a little bit of extra room here so we can make that connection. And then also the other one needs to attach to the black wire that is off of the breakaway switch. So trace that back and you'll find that the blue wire from your main unit ties into that. So we'll cut the blue wire. Make this connection now. And also, uh, obviously we're gonna be taking this unit off. So if you need to, uh, right now you can go ahead and cut the brown wire and the red wire. And we're just gonna tape those up for now. And this is gonna stay just kind of in place. It's not hurting anything to be here. It's not gonna be used obviously anymore. So if you need to, you can go ahead and zip tie that up however you want to get it out of the way. And then I'm gonna do the same with our red wire um, that we have over here. So we'll go ahead take our stay and play dual main unit and set this aside as we're not gonna be using it. Get our black wire and our blue wire stripped back. And I'll be using some heat shrink butt connectors uh, because this is in the engine bay and it could be exposed to water. These are gonna be the best way to get a nice watertight seal. Go ahead, get these crimped down. And then with the heat gun, we'll shrink it down. So at this point, we've made our electrical connections. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of tuck this in the existing wire loom that we had here, just kind of clean it up. Now we'll take our extra run of airline tube. And uh, with this, you're gonna want a nice clean cut. If you use a set of just normal snips, it can crimp it down and cause it to be more of an almond shape. And that's gonna make it to where it's not gonna want to seat in that push connect fitting as well. Um, so using a tubing cutter, uh, this is, makes a nice clean square cut. Once you have that cut made, we will plug this in to the air in, and eventually we'll be feeding this down to our, uh, our front fitting on the front of the vehicle, but we'll have our connections made here. Um, so I'll tie these up and wherever you find necessary to mount it up, I'm gonna be using, the holes don't line up the same, um, but no worries, I'm able to kind of hide those uh, with the bracket and I'll just run some quick self tappers in there that are fairly shallow and that's gonna keep that nice and secure. With that extra air line that we have, we're gonna route that down to the front where we're gonna be putting our connection for our airline fitting. Uh, I do recommend if you plan it out, you're gonna want to kind of keep it on the same side as the fitting that it's gonna be on the RV. That's one less cable that's going across. You can kind of just have a straight shot. So um, I'm gonna route my airline down here and then we're gonna determine the best place to mount up our fitting. As far as getting this ran to the front, um, a lot of times we'll put all of our components in place when we have the fascia off to put the base plate. Um, so to help you out, uh, if you want to, you can find where your existing wires maybe run up the same path and you have plenty of airline tube where you should. Uh, so I cut off a section here. I'm going to use this as a fish wire to kind of route this for up and see if I can't get this poked through. It seems like it's a little easier than going the other way. And then we can tape this together, pull it through, and then we'll have a clean run. So the main thing is you're not going to have it on any sharp corners. Um, also, obviously anything that's exhaust or anything that might be a moving part you don't want to have this damage so uh, running along the same kind of lines that we've ran before clearly this brake system works so it seems like a safe way we're going to follow that well, i've gone ahead and ran my wire down or my airline where i want it uh, i've cut this to a size where i kind of test fitted it on our fitting so this will be mounted up um, on our vehicle so make sure you do have the proper side as the RV side is gonna be a little bit different styled. Um, so I'll go ahead, I'm gonna get this pressed in here and then kind of align this up 
you want to make sure that that it's on a swivel here so make sure you have enough to where it's not going to kink if you kink the line obviously air is not going to be able to go through there um, and it does come with the hardware to kind of mount this up without taking a face off or anything like that I'm going to go ahead and use some self tappers I think that's going to hold this in place just fine um, and again just double check your airline to make sure that it's in a good position Get our other side mounted up now. Our vehicle side should be complete and we can't test this yet until we hook it up to the air brakes and we need that air to run through here and we'll pump the brakes and double check to make sure that it's working. So we're gonna head over to the RV side to get our tank uh, set up and tied into those airlines. Now any extra airline that you cut off from mounting up that you're going to want to use to hook up the tank on your RV. Now something that I will point out is the uh, Air Force One when you buy it as a total kit will have a cylinder that's a little bit different than what the Sandplay Duo has and that's because it has a magnet inside with a reed switch which that gives you your indicator light. So with this one being a little bit different on our vehicle today uh, we'd have to pick up a brake light switch and this one requires a universal one which is going to be a laser and it pretty much does a proximity and that will illuminate that LED indicator light when those brakes are being applied. So on your vehicle if you want to maintain that you are going to want to be able to tap into that uh, either the brake light switch or you're going to have to pick up a stop light switch if you shut the battery off while towing. It is kind of minor as that indicator light uh, just kind of lets you know when those brakes are being applied. It's still going to light up with the breakaway switch um, um, but again, if you want to maintain that, you are going to want to look into getting a stoplight switch if you don't already have one. As far as getting your tank and uh, all your airlines set up on your RV, the first thing that I do is mount up your fitting. And you're going to see this is a this is a female adapter, should have the larger cap on it, so make sure you have that proper one. And I just went ahead, drilled some holes here, and then used the washers and the hardware included to get that mounted up. Now, we're going to just take that extra airline, the quarter inch that we have, put it in our push connect fitting, and start routing it up. Uh, towards where we're going to tie into our supplied and metered air. Now running our airline up, main thing is follow along the frame rail. You're going to want to stay away from anything hot or potential that could cause damage and also chafing something that you're going to want to keep an eye on. So if there's any sharp corners, just make sure that that airline is not going to rub against it long term. So I've just gone ahead, followed my frame rail, and along the way I threw a few zip ties up on some of the factory wire loom just to kind of keep it secure. And it is kind of tucked up here. And then I made my way back. Now on our Freightliner, we do have our tank that we're gonna mount up and I was able to mount it right here. I flipped my bracket and it, there was a small arm here that had this sensor attached to it. So I was able to use that uh, to mount it up. It's a little bit tight as far as clearance, but it's pretty solid. And from here, we're gonna see that we have three fittings that we're gonna be attaching to. This is gonna be our supply side. This is where our metered air is gonna go in. And then this, this uh, 90 degree is where that line goes back to our fitting. So let's take a look at each of these. On our supplied air, we have our quarter inch line that runs up and that's gonna go all the way up to this large diameter green hose. So make sure it's the larger one. And that's where our T is gonna tie in. So use a tubing cutter, just as I mentioned before, it's gonna make it a lot easier to cut into that. And that line is pretty rigid. It's a little bit tricky uh, to get any movement. So you wanna make sure that your cut's perfect enough to where you can get that fitting in. Um, if you're a little bit short, it's gonna be tricky. So just take your time on that. And also, once you cut it, you're gonna to want to take a little bit of brake cleaner, kinda of wipe those down. That's gonna give it a nice clean surface. That way, you don't have any dust, dirt, kinda of building up in that push connect fitting, which can cause leaks. So that's your supply. That one, as I mentioned, put that T in. And this metered air line, uh, these are again push connect fittings, so make sure they're all properly seated, push them down, make sure they bite in. Um, and this kind of routes up, you'll see a, uh, a black hose right here. Uh, it's a little bit larger diameter, it looks to be about a 3 8 um, From there we cut and put our T, and this is going to be the smaller diameter T in line, so very similar to that supplied air. Uh, do the same technique as far as using the tubing cutter and clean that off, and then you can route this line down to the meter air. And then once you've routed your supply, or I'm sorry, the line that goes to the back fitting, that's gonna tie in here. 
So with all those connections made, make sure your tank is obviously tightened down. Um, from there, you can go ahead, start your RV, get air pressure built up, and then once you have the pressure built, you can shut it off and spray everything down. Any connection that you've made, you're gonna want to use a soapy water solution, and that's really gonna show if there's any small leaks. If you hear air hissing, that's a pretty solid sign that you have a leak, obviously. So your best bet is to take the push connect fitting, try to reseed it and see if that fixes it. But using that soapy water, you're gonna get large bubbles filling up uh, or forming around the fitting if you do have air leaks. Now, luckily we didn't have any on ours. So at this point, we can get our RV down on the ground. We're gonna hook up our air cable to our towed vehicle. And that was a look and installation of the Demco towed vehicle conversion from Stay and Play Duo to an Air Force One.